Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluate, evaluating an infinite sum with reciprocals of integers that are four apart. So we have one minus one over five plus one over nine plus minus one over 13, so on and so forth, where the signs alternate plus and minus and the denominators are numbers that are one more than a multiple of four. In other words, numbers that are one mod four appear in the denominators. Okay, so we can definitely write this uh, using the sigma notation, which, mi which might be helpful, but uh, you can do that. And I'm going to show you at the end what that looks like. We're going to be looking at some results from Wolfram Alpha, because as I'm going to show you, uh, this is going to be a little time consuming. That's why I, I kind of wanted to, uh, you know, show you what Wolfram Alpha can come up with for us. Okay, so how do you find a sum like this? First of all, one of the most important question, the million dollar question is, does this sum converge? In other words, is there a finite sum for this? That's a good question. Let me tell you that this does, and I'm, I'm also gonna show you some evidence. Uh, I mean, uh, some stuff anyways, but let's go ahead and consider the following. Sometimes when you see the solution of a math problem, the way the problem solution starts doesn't make sense. Like consider the following. Where does that come from? <laughs> well, if you kind of know the solution or if you know the end result, you can kind of come up with, you know, whatever consider the following is. Okay, anyways, so consider the following. We're going to start by integrating from 0 to 1, 1 over 1 plus x to the fourth power. And of course, there's going to be a dx. So let me go ahead and put the dx over here. So we're going to be integrating 1 over 1 plus x to the fourth power, which I'm going to show you what the integral is you know, with the definite integral and then the indefinite integral, both. Why does this have to be from zero to one? Because we need a numerical answer and our sum is very, very closely associated with this integral, which you will see in a little bit. So when you see something like one over one plus x to the fourth power, what are you thinking? Especially when x is between zero and one. Aren't you thinking the infinite geometric series? Well, you should. So this is what it looks like. If you think about 1 over 1 plus r, that can be written as 1, or maybe I should start here. Let's start with the basic uh, infinite geometric series, which is 1 plus r plus r squared plus r to the third, so on and so forth. And if r is between negative 1 and 1, this can be written as 1 over 1 minus r. That's going to be the finite sum where the series converges, right? What happens if I replace r with negative r? Then negative r brings negative signs with the odd powers and the, po the uh, even powers do not change. So we get something like this. Make sense? And that's exactly what we need. So we're going to start off with 1 over 1 plus r. And guess what? We're going to replace r with x to the fourth power. Exactly. Because we're looking for 1 over 1 plus x to the fourth power. And that's going to be coming from the left hand side, which is now on the right hand side. So it's going to look like this, 1 minus x to the 4th plus x to the 8th, because I'm squaring x to the 4th, and then minus x four to the 4th cubed, which is x to the power 12, so on and so forth. This goes on forever. We know that it converges, so it's all good. Now, what do you do with this? Integrate both sides. Exactly. Let's do it. So I'm going to go ahead and integrate this, and integrate this, and I kind of need to put this whole thing in parentheses. And now, how do you integrate the left-hand side? We'll get to that. But how do you integrate the left hand, right hand side? Is I mean this one. Easy. It's just power rule. How do you integrate 1? x. This is x to the 5th divided by 5. Plus x to the 9th divided by 9. Minus x to the power 13 divided by 13. You get the idea? Hopefully. Since this is 0 to 1, 0 to 1, then this will be 0 to 1. And when you replace x with 1, you're going to get 1 minus 1 over 5 plus 1 over 9, minus 1 over 13, plus dot, dot, dot. When you replace x with 0, you get 0, subtract 0. It's not going to matter. So forget about it. And this is the very sum we are trying to evaluate. So it all comes down to integrating this quartic function. I mean the reciprocal or the rational function, whatever. So the million dollar, the second million dollar question, maybe a two million dollar question is, how do you integrate 1 over 1 plus x to the fourth power. To be able to do that, we're going to use what's called partial fractions. What does that mean? 
It means that, for example, consider the following. Again, it's like another consideration. Suppose you had a problem like this, where you had to make a common denominator. You would say, okay, this is x plus one plus x divided by x squared plus x. In other words, this would be two x plus one divided by x squared plus x. What if I told you, okay, I have this, can you write this as a sum of two or more fractions? Wait a minute, what are you talking about? Well, if you factor the denominator, this is what I'm talking about. Can you write this as a sum of two fractions whose denominators are these? That's more specific, obviously, right? And the answer is yes. You can say that, okay, there must be a constant here divided by x, another constant divided by x plus one. And when I make a common denominator, this should be equal so I can find a and b because they're, they're gonna be polynomials. Okay, good, nice. What about this? Well, it's not that easy because we need to factor x to the fourth plus one. Wait a minute. Is that factorable? Isn't that sum of two squares? Are we going to use complex numbers? You can, actually. That's going to be fun, but I'm not going to use it because this channel is not about complex numbers. I have another channel called A plus BI, which is all about complex numbers. Make sure to check it out, right? This is cyber math. So let's get back to work. So how do we integrate this? So the question is now how do you factor it? Right? So we're going to need to factor x to the fourth plus one. How do you factor it? Well, we can complete the square, like add to x squared and subtract it, and there you go. You got yourself a perfect square, and that's just perfect, because this is x squared plus one squared, and this is root two x quantity squared. And it can be factored. Nice. Now, I can do the following. I can write this as one over x squared plus root two x plus one, multiply by x squared minus root 2x plus 1. From difference of two squares, I'm able to write these two factors, right? a squared minus b squared, remember that. So now, we have the factored form, and these are quadratics, but they're not nicely factorable. So what should we do? We can go ahead and split it up into two pieces, like maybe ax plus b, and by the way, the rule is if the denominator is irreducible, then the degree difference must be 1. So in other words, if the denominator is irreducible quadratic, the numerator must be a linear factor or linear term. So we have to write it like this. Make sense? And with repeated factors, there's another idea, but this video is not about partial fractions. That's why I'm going to settle for this one. So you get the idea. Set it equal to these and then distribute and hopefully you're going to get A, B, C, and D. But again, the heavy lifting was done by Wolfram Alpha, so why do the work? But guess what? Once you do this, whatever you get from the right hand side, which is gonna be quite complicated, by the way, I'm, I'm gonna show you what it is. And then you're gonna get that result. And of course, you know, I mean, from here, you're gonna get something, something, something from zero to one, you're gonna place X with one, X with zero, subtract those two results, and that should give you the numerical answer. Okay, make sense? Okay, so here's, an, here's a follow up question. If these signs were all plus signs, would this converge? How can you prove or disprove? Can you think of an integral that will be similar to this one? And then go from there, hopefully, all right? If you're ready, we can go ahead and look at the results. Are you ready for Wolfram Alpha? Because Wolfram Alpha did a really good job this time, unlike other times, but ta-da-da-da, here we go. First of all, this converges like I told you earlier. Yes, it does. And this is pretty interesting, actually, if you look at this, this is the partial sum formula. So that sum that we were looking at, remember? One, one minus one over five plus one over nine minus one over 13. What if you don't make an infinite sum, you don't make an infinite series, but you stop at the nth term? How would you find the answer in terms of n? Wow, that is gonna be quite complicated, involving so many weird functions like this, but it's kind of fun to look at, isn't it? So. The definite integral is equal to this, which is really weird, right? We have the cotangent hyperbolic inverse or inverse cotangent hyperbolic. Yes, because of the exponentials and all that stuff, that's what it is. But numerically, as you can see that this sum actually converges, it's about 0 0.8669 and 7. And guess what? What would happen if we integrated this like an indefinite integral, which is actually what you're supposed to do first before you can plug in 1 and 0, and ta-da! Here's the integral thanks to Wolfram Alpha. Did they have a lifting? I didn't have to do this because, come on, this would take forever. But doesn't this look familiar when we factored? That was one of the factors. This was another factor. But there are other factors because when you do the partial fractions, you're going to have to split up 
that fraction a couple more times. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and don't, don't, don't forget to check out A plus PI. And bye-bye.